Hi friends, uh, so moving on to the next uh, type of trigger, uh, DML trigger that we have is the instead of trigger. So the instead of trigger is, is basically uh, called uh, when we fire a insert, update or delete similarly as, 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 the, as the for trigger, for or off the trigger. But the only difference is it, it does not allow uh, the DML to be executed. So it's, it's actually uh, something like the for or after trigger happens only after the DML is executed while uh, the instead of trigger happens only uh, af, I mean, uh, at the same time before the DML happens. It doesn't allow the DML to uh, happen at all. So if I if I say uh, that I have a table and on this on the same table I have uh, I fire and uh, uh, I create an instead of trigger and a for trigger on insert uh, DML. I mean uh, when there is an insert I, I create uh, instead of trigger and the for trigger at the same time on the table. So and I ask you what is going to happen if I if I fire uh, an insert query after doing so. Uh, the answer is uh, the for trigger would not uh, be fired at all. It's only the instead of trigger that is going to be fired because the DML uh, will never be executed or the for statement for a trigger will never uh, come into picture or come into place because the instead of trigger will uh, even uh, will be fired even before any anything you know comes into existence. Uh, now let's just try to see uh, an instead of trigger. This uh, the functionality is the same. We have the inserted and the uh, deleted tables uh, to track uh, the values now let's create an instead of trigger uh, on the same table uh, with the name employee sal where we will uh, uh, we will keep, keep uh, a check where uh, the insert should not happen uh, in the employee table if the salary is of negative value so it's just uh, like a check where we will fire uh, an alert saying saying cannot insert the employee with negative salary will flag the error and roll back the transaction so this is a very simple trigger that we have uh, created on the employee uh, table for you uh, let's just fire this uh, execute this trigger and then let's uh, try to insert a record into our employee uh, table uh, uh, let's call it and uh, with a negative value so let's try to insert this value so it, it gives you an error saying that they cannot insert the employee uh, salary with a negative value and it fires now if we check for uh, for our employee table we would not find that data or, or that record inserted because the because it's the instead of trigger that got fired and flagged the error and rolled back the transaction so that's one part of it uh, that's uh, the employee that's the instead of trigger for you now going by the differences what is a, uh, a major difference which i would want to highlight uh, between an instead of trigger and a for uh, trigger is let's take a closer look at the employee table If we uh, take a look at the employee table, you would see that I have created a check constraint on the department uh, uh, column or, or, or the attribute, which is it. It would not. It would check for the constraint during the insert. It will check for the department to be HR, finance, IT, or or development. Uh, or dev I mean anything apart from these four values uh, would not be allowed the insert would fail if there is anything in department apart from these four values so I am just put in a, a constraint keeping this constraint in mind if we try to uh, let's uh, drop this trigger for now the employee uh, salary trigger and I'm dropping this trigger now let's move on and, and keeping this trigger in, 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 in mind if we create a for insert trigger so this is a for insert trigger if you see this is the for trigger where uh, we are trying to handle uh, the department and check if the department is not in IT HR finance dev then let's default it to dev I mean anything apart from uh, and then uh, you know allow that insert to happen uh, so let's see if that if that is allowed to us or not I mean uh, let's fire this uh, uh, trigger and you know let's try to insert this record so it will it will flag an error 
saying that it conflicted uh, the department check constraint and it did not meet uh, the criteria now in the similar lines let's try to create a trigger for instead of uh, uh, instead of trigger uh, and then let's uh, try to audit the data first the which was inserted and then handle it uh, in the similar fashion that we did for the last you know trigger using instead of this is our, our trigger we are going to put the data in employee audit uh, as in the last video for uh, for the dml uh, uh, for trigger and then we are going to handle the inserted record and then insert appropriately if it is not an hr uh, it finance dev uh, we will uh, default it to dev so let's fire this trigger and then let's try to I'm dropping this trigger for now uh, and then uh, let me try to you know let's just try to take a look at these two tables now we do not have anything to do with jobs uh, and then I'm putting the department to AB right now if you see the audits table you find find something like this. You find that the jobs uh, employee wo uh, was inserted with a department of dev while the actual department was AB. So it was handled uh, and it was inserted. So what I am trying to say here is is uh, is a very simple thing. The constraints are evaluated uh, in the for trigger even before the trigger uh, is. Uh, you know when when we have a constraint in place. Uh, that applies in, in a for trigger so so for trigger would not uh, be able to handle the constraint and while the instead of trigger is fired even before the constraint is evaluated so uh, it doesn't even check for the constraints and, and, and even before that it fires the instead of trigger while for a for trigger the constraints are evaluated first uh, the insert happens and only then the for or the after trigger is is uh, you know uh, fired so uh, that way if you are if, uh, if you are trying to manipulate any any default values like if you have a sequence to generate you could leverage this functionality or leverage this con condition in a instead of trigger uh, and then uh, put it straight having said that this is the last session on triggers uh, uh, triggers are expensive try to avoid them uh, and, and only in a very uh, in, a, in a condition where you have you do not have any uh, other mechanisms to handle it or audit it uh, do put uh, triggers because it does put an overhead on your table on your database uh, so uh, be careful while uh, creating triggers and don't unnecessarily uh, complicate the executions of the DMLs uh, at least that would be my advice thank you friends